don't take taxis. This was my very first note that I made for myself. After I made the huge mistake of hopping into a cab to take me from Narita Airport into Tokyo. I was so used to affordable $30 and $40 rides from the airport in New York that I was absolutely stunned when the meter for my first ride in Tokyo came to over $100. Having now traveled to Japan numerous times over the years, I've learned firsthand that there are a lot of unspoken rules that first time visitors just don't know. I'm sharing the essential travel tips that I wish someone had told me before I visited Japan for the very first time. And stick around to the end, I have lots of money saving tips that you don't want to miss. First up, the best ways to get around the city. Getting from the airport to Tokyo doesn't have to damper the start of your trip. Coming in from Haneda Airport, the k q Airport Line is a train that runs frequently from Haneda Airport Station to downtown Tokyo in just about 11 minutes. It only costs 470 yen to Shinagawa Station, where you can transfer to the JR Yamanote Line to access popular neighborhoods like Shibuya, Shinjuku, and Tokyo Station. The Tokyo Monorail also runs from Haneda Airport to downtown Tokyo in about 15 minutes. It costs 490 yen, and from Hamamatsucho Station, you can transfer to the JR Yamanote line if you have a Japan Rail Pass. The friendly airport limousine takes you directly to major hotels and train stations in Tokyo. The ride takes between 30 to 75 minutes depending on the traffic and the price starts from around 1,000 yen. Oh, and this may all sound foreign to you right now, but that's normal. Don't worry, I'll clear it up in a second. Starting your trip from Narita, the JR Narita Express train offers direct service to major stations in downtown Tokyo like Tokyo Station. It takes about an hour to reach Tokyo Station and it costs about 3,020 yen or 20 US dollars. The Narita Express ticket is fully covered by the Japan Rail Pass. The Keisei Limited Express is a more budget-friendly option and it connects to Napori and Ueno stations in downtown Tokyo in 36 to 40 minutes and it costs about 2,470 yen or about 17 US dollars. And a quick note if you have a super early arrival or a super late departure time. Tokyo's trains and subways shut down every night from around midnight to 5 a.m. for maintenance. To avoid being stuck with a taxi as your only mode of transportation, consider staying at a capsule hotel or the hotel within the airport. Then the next morning, you'll be able to catch your flight out or continue on to the city with ease. And I'll show you a master tip later that very few people know for figuring out the last trains that are running to whatever destination you choose. So keep an eye out for that. Now let's talk about the best transportation options once you're in Tokyo. Be thoughtful when you're considering any train passes because they aren't one size fits all. Let me give you a quick breakdown between the two most popular cards for visitors, IC cards and the JR Pass. IC cards like PASMO and Suica are prepaid charge cards that can be used on all local public transit, like trains, subways, buses, and monorails within major metropolitan areas and they allow easy tap and go payment. You simply touch the card on the ticket sensors when you're entering and exiting the train stations. You can also use IC cards in convenience stores, shops, on buses, vending machines, and more in Tokyo. In contrast, rail passes like the Japan Rail Pass cover most long distance trains that are run by JR nationwide, including the Shinkansen bullet trains between cities. They provide huge savings compared to individual tickets if you plan to travel widely within the country. If your trip is concentrated in just one city like Tokyo, pay per ride with an IC card can end up being a more affordable option than a nationwide rail pass like the JR Pass. But if your itinerary covers multiple destinations across Japan, a rail pass is likely to be the better deal. Quick note that beginning October 1st, 2023, the price of the JR Pass is set to increase significantly, so plan your travel accordingly. Also, take note that you cannot use the JR Pass on the Tokyo Metropolitan Subway. Your best bet for that will be an IC card, a Tokyo Metro Pass, or one of the Toei Subway Passes. My favorite train trip to take while in Japan is the Golden Route. Now, you may see different itineraries depending on if you make a reservation with a touring company, but whenever I plan it on my own, I take the Shinkansen from Tokyo to cities like Hakone, Kyoto, Nara, and Osaka. And then I'll add on cities like Hiroshima and Hokkaido. And I do all this within a 14-day or 21-day pass. It's truly one of the most remarkable trips, and it's one of the best ways to get your money's worth out of one of the unlimited JR passes. But whenever I'm staying just in Tokyo or just in Kyoto, I'll just buy an IC card, a Tokyo Metro Pass, or a Toei Subway Pass. And if you're planning on riding the Shinkansen yourself, try this money-saving tip. Purchase your Shinkansen train ticket in advance on the JR website and then link it to your IC card or your PASMO.
By buying it early and online, you could potentially save around 10,000 yen per ticket. All right, you're ready to move around the big city, but let's figure out what you're gonna do with your luggage. If you wanna start exploring right when you touch down, consider renting a coin locker at the airport. But I swear by the Taki Bean service. It's a parcel transport company that can deliver your luggage directly to your hotel or your next destination, sometimes the same day. Service counters can be found at the airport and places throughout the city. For peace of mind, whenever I use any delivery service or transit where I'll be separated from my personal bags, I use Apple AirTags. You just tuck the tiny trackers inside your bags and luggage and you can relax knowing that you can locate anything missing and you'll always know where your luggage is located. Here are some quick etiquette tips and extra things you should know about riding public transportation in Japan. Take off backpacks and crowded trains. Put them in front of you, in between your feet, or onto luggage racks. Avoid bringing large pieces of luggage onto trains, especially during the rush hours. And if you have big luggage, just use the Taki Bean delivery service. While Japan is extremely safe overall, groping unfortunately can be an issue on packed rush hour trains. To help prevent this, many lines offer women-only cars as a safe space during busy commuter times, which is usually between 8 and 9 a.m. in the morning, and then shortly after 5 p.m. in the evening. Look for the pink signage to find these cars and avoid boarding by mistake. Alerting authorities and reporting incidents right away is super important. When getting in or out of a taxi, allow the driver to open the door automatically for you. The cars are equipped for it and it's the only way for the driver to know when you are safely inside or outside of the car. Rideshare like Uber and Lyft aren't really a thing in Japan. Apps exist for it, but they usually just call a taxi for you, but there are no big savings by using the service. If you plan on renting a car, be sure to factor in your tolls, parking, and gas. Tolls can get extremely pricey in Japan, making the cost of renting a car far more expensive than train travel. You'll also need a special driver's license in order to be able to drive in Japan, so be sure to check that out as well. If you're still feeling a little overwhelmed by all the transportation options, just use Google Maps. Google Maps gives you multiple path options and transit options between your starting point and your destination. It's just like as if you use it in your home country. And one awesome feature is that you can use the price estimate to determine how much money you'll need for your trip and whether you should consider another mode of transportation. If you're looking for more efficient travels, Google Maps will also show you the best train cars to use for the fastest transfer point in the station and it's based on the proximity of the train to the stairs. Just match the train car that's shown on Google Maps to the train car tape in the station to make sure that you're in the right place. Here's another quick tip. If you're using Google Maps for cycling, don't use the cycling map feature. It sometimes takes you off on wild and steep adventures that you don't necessarily need to go through. Instead, use the driving map feature and then filter out the highways and tolls within the settings. This will put you on a much more bearable and sometimes more efficient riding path. Oh, and if you wanna make sure you'll never be stranded anywhere in Tokyo after the train stop, try this feature. All you need to do is put your destination in Google Maps and select the last train available option. Google Maps will then provide you with a list of the absolute last train options that you have going to the destination that you've input. But if you're fairly new to transportation in Japan, you might wanna give yourself a little bit of leeway and not take the last train. So now that you have your Japan transit planned out, where do you most want to go first? Is it the futuristic neon cityscape of Akihabara or the historical sites in Kamakura? Or is it the winding back streets in Asakusa? Let me know your must visit destinations in the comments. Whichever destination has the most amount of votes, I'll be sure to cover it in one of my next videos to show you the best things to do and explore in that area. All right, you've got the Tokyo transport mastered. So now let's switch gears to everyone's favorite topic, money, currency exchange rates, ATM fees, credit cards, traveler's checks, and what's this about carrying wads of cash around while you're in Japan? It can all be so overwhelming. Let me explain. First, exchange rates. These fluctuate daily based on economic forces that I won't get too far into. If you Google currency converter, you're going to see what's called mid-market rates. It's what a currency is worth on that day. But banks and airport exchanges don't use the exact mid-market rate. They add fees and percentages to turn a profit and, of course, run their business. So you can expect to get 5 to 10% less per dollar swap to yen when you're using an airport exchange counter. But here's my tip. If you just have to use an airport exchange or even an ATM at the airport, only swap a small amount there just to cover you for your first few days or even just for your first few hours in Tokyo. Even better, order some yen from your bank a few weeks before your trip. The rate will be slightly better than the airport and it gives you a nice little yen cushion in case there are travel delays. Okay, so now you have some yen pocket change. 
but you'll likely need more cash throughout your trip. And this is where the 7-Eleven ATMs become your new best friend. The exchange rate at 7-Eleven ATMs is really close to the mid-market rate, and it's way better than airport counters. There is a small fee, but overall it's cheaper. Oh, and don't worry about walking around town with wads of cash in Japan. Japan is a safe country, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be careful. Here are some etiquette tips that will make you more zen when it comes to your yen. Avoid looking like an obvious tourist with your yen. Keep it neatly tucked away, use exact change at shops, and absolutely no tipping. It's not customary in Japan, and it's usually seen as a sign of disrespect. When paying cash, place money on a small tray instead of directly into the attendant's hands. And then just add a polite arigato gozaimasu with a slight bow. Then you'll blend right in. If you ever get too much change back from the attendant, you're duty bound to return it. If you notice it and you don't return it, that can be treated as fraud in Japan. And be sure to notify your bank of your travel dates and destinations before you depart. This prevents any potential account freezes due to suspicious activity when withdrawals start showing up abroad. And consider an anti-theft bag with an RFID protection wallet and multiple secret compartments to keep your most important documents and money safe. Oh, and let's not forget credit cards. That's an option as well. Luckily, Tokyo is modern. Most big stores and restaurants accept major credit cards, but cash still rules at traditional shops and in rural areas. My suggestion? Use cards for big purchases when possible, but always carry bills for taxis, trains, and the occasional ramen emergency. When in doubt, go cash. With international money transfer services like Chime and Revolut, you can open a multi-currency account online that's linked to your bank account and then hold balances in US dollars, yen, euros, etc. You can easily exchange currency between balances anytime through their app or the website. Fees do apply for the exchanges. I'll put the links below so you can research if they're the right tool for you. And please let me know if you have any other money questions and share your own currency tips below to help other fellow travelers unlock the secrets of yen success in Japan. All right, we've got our yen sorted. Now let's talk prepping ahead for accommodations. Let me tell you, I learned this lesson in the most embarrassing way. So I flew my parents out to Japan for their first visit and we did Tokyo and Kyoto together. But I waited until the absolute last minute to book one of our nights in Kyoto. But I had to keep it together and make my parents believe that I had already made a reservation for our stay. So I got on my phone, started tapping away, and it turns out I had accidentally booked us all into a Japanese love hotel. Let's just say that the mirrored ceilings and neon lights should have been giant red flags in the pictures. Again, lesson learned. So now I plan my accommodations four to six months in advance to score deals at better locations. Let me share my insider tricks to help you secure the perfect lodging without the headaches or the embarrassment. Here's a pro tip I use. Booking from outside of Japan using a VPN service reveals lower local rates than booking internationally, saving 10 to 15% on bookings in some cases. VPN services like NordVPN work for any travel booking sites. You sign up for the VPN service, download the app, and then connect to a Japanese server before you book. Now there are a lot of options for where you can stay in Japan. So even if you're booking last minute, don't fret. Do you love sleek modernity? Go for a high-rise hotel in the heart of Tokyo or Osaka. If you're seeking cultural immersion, reserve a traditional ryokan inn with tatami floors and futon beds. Capsule hotels have efficient solo pods, which are perfect for backpackers, and business hotels provide simple and affordable rooms. Or you can indulge in a resort with an onsen hot spring. And be sure to research the neighborhood vibes in each city. You want to pick ideal locales based on your interests. So history buffs, head to Kamakura. Nightlife lovers, go for Roppongi. And for pop culture enthusiasts, stay in Akihabara. And use Google Maps Street View to scout locations and proximity to top attractions that you might want to visit while you're there. Now, a few things to know about traditional Japanese accommodations. Ryokans and minchukus often use comfy futon beds on tatami mat floors instead of Western mattresses. It's part of the cultural experience, so just be aware in case you have any issues with sleeping on or close to the ground. While hotels have private bathrooms, some smaller inns offer shared facilities. Confirm amenities when you're booking to avoid surprises. And if you prefer a private bathroom, request in suite to avoid the no frills guest houses. And if smoking is an issue for you, it's 
probably best to avoid the lower budget accommodations. Oftentimes, non-smoking rooms are designated as smoking rooms on vacant nights, so the lingering smell will be a pretty unpleasant surprise. When paying for your accommodations in person, bigger chains accept credit cards, but smaller real cons only take cash, so always have some yen bills on hand as a backup. All right, super travelers, it's pop quiz time. Let's test your knowledge about this section and the one from before. This one's advanced, but here it goes. Okay, so you landed in Tokyo and you're staying in the city to tour for the day. But for tomorrow, you're planning to travel to Kyoto to experience staying in an authentic ryokan. How would you get around and what pass or passes would you buy? The Japan Rail Pass, the IC card, regular tickets? Explain your choice in the comments. Now that you know exactly where you'd like to stay when you visit Japan, where in the calendar should you slot your upcoming adventure? With incredible scenery and events that change each month, choosing your ideal travel window takes some thought. Let's explore what Japan has to offer during each season so you can map out a trip that's timed perfectly for you. Here's a mind blower for you. Did you know that each year over 100 million people search for information about the best time to travel to Japan? This means that there are over 300,000 people searching for this information every day. It seems everyone wants a piece of the land of the rising sun, and they want it just at the right moment. But don't worry, I'll give you a breakdown on the best seasons so you can plan your adventure during the perfect moments that speak to you. Spring means one thing in Japan, cherry blossom season. Come late March, prepare for an explosion of cotton candy pink everywhere. This is the perfect time to fake nap under the sakura trees for insta-worthy hanami pics. But you want to book way ahead though, or do weekday trips before the crowds hit. Fair warning, you'll be competing with thousands of others in places like Ueno Park or Hirosaki Castle. Summer is hot, but it's also super lively with beach vibes and non-stop festivals. Make a splash at water parks or escape the humidity in more northern locations like Hokkaido. From June onward, always pack umbrellas. Rainy season means weeks of wet weather. But the payoff is gorgeous, lush scenery. You'll just have to try sampling street food and a little bit of a drizzle. In my opinion, fall is the jackpot for natural beauty. Cooler temperatures with vivid red maple leaves? Yes, please. You can do leaf peeping right in spots like Nikko, Kamikochi, and Dasetsutsan. But skip the crazy weekend crowds. Weekdays are your new best friend. And then you can soak your trail-weary bones in an open-air onsen hot spring. Just pure heaven. Come December, snow bunnies and Christmas lovers rejoice. Will you choose powder perfection in Niseko or illuminations in Osaka? Take your pick, but just don't visit during New Year's when families shut down everything for celebration. Beyond climate, whatever you plan to do while you're in Japan also determines the ideal timing. History buffs, spring or fall allow temple hopping without the risk of a heat stroke. Anime fans, target October for Comic-Con and cool geeky pilgrimages. Foodies get autumn seafood harvest, but spring has sakura sweets. And speaking of, be sure to check out this fun short on Momiji Manju. It's the perfect prep to get you ready for tasting one of Japan's most famous treats. And here's another money-saving tip for you. Search for airfares directly on Asian airline websites like ANA and JAL. While sites like Expedia or your local airline can be convenient, you may find cheaper fares by going directly to the Japanese airline websites. Even if the site is in Japanese, use Google Translate or the English version of the site. You can sometimes save up to $300 or more per ticket. Asian airlines also have sales and discounts that don't always show up on the American and European sites. So no matter your travel style, sync your dates with suitable seasons and events for a tailored trip. But do your best to avoid the spikes in traffic during Golden Week and Obon. Wondering what to pack when you go? Focus on versatile essentials that will mix and match into outfits. It's actually possible to travel Japan with just a carry-on suitcase. And speaking of, if you're in the process of researching new carry-on suitcases, check out this video where I reviewed six luggage companies and their top six carry-ons that are on the market today. Plan your wardrobe around Japan's distinctive seasons. Spring and fall are mild, so light layers work perfectly. Summers are hot and humid, so I'd recommend breathable fabrics that dry quickly. And winters rarely snow except for up north, so I'd pack warm sweaters and a medium coat. For rainy season, you're not going to be wearing too much other than a raincoat and rain boots. And don't forget durable, comfortable walking shoes. You'll likely clock 10 plus miles per day exploring huge cities like Tokyo and Osaka. And here's a quirky but essential Japan item. 
Bring a few foldable bags. They come in so handy for toting wet umbrellas, dirty shoes, and omniage souvenir purchases. And hand sanitizers and hand wipes are essentials. In Japan, it's more common to use hand dryers or heated air dryers instead of paper towels to dry your hands after washing them. So now that you have more insight on what Japan has to offer during the different times of the year, what's your ideal time to visit Japan? Let me know in the comments when you'd like to go and why. Now, I'll never forget the time when my friend had a terrifying allergic reaction at a Tokyo restaurant on my second trip to Japan. Neither of us spoke Japanese, so we couldn't properly communicate her medical needs. It was truly eye-opening how unprepared we were. From that day on, I made it my mission to learn every trick to streamline traveling in Japan with dietary and allergy restrictions. Let's start with allergy prep. I now always carry translated cards listing my medications and allergies to flash at restaurants. And I practice basic Japanese phrases for communicating about ingredients and emergencies. When you have dietary restrictions in Japan, finding truly authentic meals takes some savvy. Here's a pro tip though. Rather than just Googling words like sushi or ramen, use the Japanese kanji characters. Reviews in Japanese are more likely by locals who know the great spots beyond tourist traps. And use Google Translate to find vegan, gluten-free, or other specific dishes in Japanese. Here's a quick tip when you're using Google Translate. You can actually use the camera function to take pictures of menus that are in Japanese and decipher what allergy information or ingredients might be listed. And also, I haven't fully researched this anecdote yet, but I've been told that in tourist traps, sometimes the prices on the Japanese menu are lower than the ones that are in English or another language. I don't know if that's true, but it's worth checking out. And for my vegan and vegetarian friends, you'll be pleased to know that the Happy Cow app is alive and well in Japan. To bridge communication gaps, order international allergy cards before your trip. Sites like foodallergy.org create bilingual cards for food allergies, intolerances, and other dietary needs. These can be lifesavers. I'll link to the site below. Okay, let's pause there. Based on what we've covered so far, do you feel fully equipped to effectively communicate your dietary needs in Japan and respond to food emergencies? Share your thoughts or ask any questions in the comments below. Beyond cards, it's important to know what to do solo in an emergency. For potentially life-threatening allergies, carry emergency medication like epinephrine auto-injectors and print a bilingual list of allergy symptoms and clear instructions on when to administer your meds. You can also get this vital sheet through the link below. Review the steps with your doctor before you leave and have multiple copies to share. Being prepared with a plan can save critical minutes. Speaking of epinephrine, just know that the EpiPen is the only auto injector that's sold in Japan. So if you use something else at home, be sure to get the right prescription. When flying, airport security will want to see all the labels and prescription details that match your medication. You can make it easy by getting a physician's letter outlining the required meds for your food allergy as part of a travel health plan. This will prevent a lot of hassles. All right, so we've covered allergy and diet planning from A to Z. And now that you're equipped to dine with confidence, let's make sure that you're fully prepped for any other health or safety situations that may come up. In 2018, a British woman was arrested entering Japan with 0.39 grams of marijuana. She was sentenced to two years in prison. This case shows the severity of Japan's drug and medication laws, but follow the rules closely and you'll be fine. First, triple check that all medicines and medications that you're planning on bringing in are fully legal in Japan. Rules differ from home, so even common drugs like Adderall or cough syrup with codeine are prohibited without special approval. And don't assume, carefully review Japan's guidelines. Penalties for undeclared restricted medications are severe. Do not risk it. And declare all medicines when arriving. Better safe than sorry. And just a quick pro tip, Keep digital copies of your prescriptions, medical history, etc. in a secure online vault that you can easily access from your phone. Outside of your personal medication needs, it's important to come to Japan prepared for any unexpected situations that may arise. You can start by saving key emergency numbers in your phone, like 110 for police and 119 for ambulance. Japan Helpline also offers 24-7 English guidance. And take a photo of your hotel and your hotel's address in Japanese and in English so that you can show your taxi or ambulance drivers how to get back to your hotel at any time. And I know this is a lot of information to remember, so check the link below. I've created a free editable emergency travel guide that includes a checklist for all the travel documentation, medication, and allergy information that we've covered. If you want to take an extra step in protecting yourself and your trip, travel insurance provides invaluable peace of mind if the unexpected pops up like it did with my friend. 
When buying insurance, verify the policy covers what matters most, medical, cancellations, valuables, and risky activities that you may plan to do. Purchase it within 15 days of your first booking. Travel insurance can come in handy in the most unexpected situations. For example, say you break your leg skiing and you require surgery and hospitalization for two days. Your policy could cover the $5,000 medical fees and evacuate you home safely instead of leaving you with a huge bill. And speaking of, for medical emergencies, knowing how to explain symptoms and allergies in Japanese could save critical time. Have your emergency translations on hand. Also, bring a basic health travel kit pain relievers, upset stomach aids, motion sickness meds, bandages, extra contacts, etc. Whatever you normally need, bring it along, but be sure you declare it at customs. All right, we've got health and safety prep covered. Now let's switch gears to an equally critical documentation preparation. Having your passport, visa, and customs details sorted smooths the way to an incredible trip. Your passport is your ticket to Japan. Be sure it has at least two totally blank pages for stamps and at least six months of validity remaining after your trip end date. Airlines can deny your boarding if these requirements aren't met. And if the airlines happen to overlook it and it's discovered in Japan, they will send you right back home on a return flight. For US citizens, you won't need a tourist visa for stays under 90 days. But for other nationalities, Japan's visa rules vary widely. So do your homework well in advance as the application involves paperwork, interviews, and processing time. And here's a super important pro tip. Double check visa requirements for any other Asian countries that you may plan to visit in addition to Japan. The rules can differ country to country and your onward travel plans will be checked at the border in Japan. So you wanna make sure that you have your next destination sorted out before arriving in Japan. And register your trip details with your home country's consulate in Japan before departure. Oh, and leave a copy of your passport photo page with a trusted contact back at home. You never know when having a backup digital copy might come in handy. Now, quick public service announcement. Entry rules for Japan have changed dramatically since reopening their borders. Make 100% sure that the current visa guidance that you see online applies to your trip dates, and then triple check that any forms are updated versions. And even greater news, as of May 2023, Japan has lifted all COVID-related entry restrictions. No more needing to show proof of vaccine or negative test results. It's now just two quick stops, immigration and customs, and you're on your way to enjoying Japan. Even better, you can complete those in advance online through Visit Japan Web. I'll be going over how to breeze through customs using this magical app. And there's one trick for saving money when you shop in Japan that you won't want to miss. Now, a quick but critical note about carrying your passport. You must carry your passport on you at all times in Japan. And the reason is simple. It's the only definitive proof that you're legally in Japan and that you're not a Japanese citizen. Your entry stamp is vital. Carrying just a photocopy or a photo on your phone is not sufficient documentation. If you fail to produce your actual passport when it's requested by authorities, the police can escort you back to your hotel to retrieve it. And at worst, you could face a hefty fine up to 100,000 yen. That's not an ideal hit to your vacation budget. Beyond police checks, you'll also need your passport itself when you're exchanging rail passes, checking into hotels, making tax-free purchases, and more during your stay in Japan. Get your documents in order and the rest of your planning will fall into place. Let me know if you need any clarification on the visa rules or paperwork specifics. Now that your documents are prepped, let's talk about sailing through immigration and customs seamlessly. While it's not mandatory, I highly recommend using the Visit Japan web app to skip the hassle of paper forms and lines. But if you prefer old school methods, immigration cards are available before checkpoints or on your flight. Oh, and here's the amazing money saving pro tip. Use the app to get a tax-free shopping QR code. You just scan the QR code at participating stores and they'll deduct the tax from your purchases. But be aware, tax-free shopping comes with important rules. Here are some of them. You must personally export the items unopened and unused. Consuming or gifting them in Japan forfeits the tax exemption. Keep receipts as proof of purchase and to reclaim tax if needed at customs. Tax evasion by not possessing exempt items on departure can incur fines up to 500,000 yen. Just to break that down a little bit for you, it basically means if you buy something in Japan that's tax exempt, but you try to leave the country without that item unused, that's considered tax evasion. As long as you adhere to the guidelines, tax-free shopping can save you big on souvenirs and gifts. The Visit Japan web app is pretty magical and it makes the process incredibly smooth. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions on using this time-saving app 
or on the tax-free shopping rules. I'm happy to make a video walking through how to use the app if it might be helpful for the community. Before we continue, if you're finding this Japan travel guide helpful so far, please take a moment to subscribe. I'll be releasing many more videos to help you plan an incredible trip, not only in Tokyo, but throughout the rest of Japan. So hit the bell to be notified of new Japan content. Your support really keeps me creating useful resources. Arigato, friends. Now that you're document ready, let's switch gears to etiquette. Mastering Japanese customs reveals a passageway to unraveling this captivating culture. From precision bowing to removing shoes, let's explore the code of conduct that makes Japan so wondrously unique. It begins with a bow. Not just any bow, but a precise motion ingrained since childhood. A slight head nod or lean for casual interactions, but bend full at the waist for formal greetings, holding for a few seconds to convey deep respect. The depth and duration relay the appropriate level of deference. And now you've had your first lesson on the proper way to shake hands in Japan. Fascinating, right? The more you take the time to immerse yourself, the more you will enjoy the beauty of personal expansion that international travel has to offer. Beyond the basics, be aware of these cultural customs. Never stick chopsticks brazenly upright in rice. It eerily mimics funeral incense. Pass dishes and pour drinks with your arm fully extended, avoiding reaching over others. Slurp your noodles to exclaim your satisfaction and leave your chopsticks resting politely horizontal to signal contentment. In most Japanese restaurants, you'll be given a small wet cloth to clean your fingers. Use it, fold it neatly, and lay it on the side of your plate. Never use it to wash your face or clean up spilt food and drink. It's not a napkin. It's officially called an oshibori, so be prepared. In transit, voices remain muted and activities restricted. On trains, chatter softly and stand to the left on escalators, allowing passengers to breeze by on the right. And if your neighbor happens to fall asleep and their head hits your shoulder, it's common courtesy in Japan to just let them keep sleeping. Oh, and don't use your mobile phone in trains unless it's clearly allowed to do so. Using emails or SMS is fine though. For drinking customs, wait for the host to give an enthusiastic kampai before indulging in your beverage. Never hastily pour your own drink. Someone will promptly notice and politely take over the pouring duties. Remove your shoes gracefully upon entering homes, temples, or traditional restaurants and museums. Separate bathroom slippers are inside of restrooms and homes since exterior footwear is not permitted. Gifting necessitates care and consideration. Say ojamashimash while entering someone's house and always offer a small token intricately wrapped. Present it with both hands and a slight bow. Never open a gift publicly though. Wait respectfully until later, and then profusely compliment the gift in the sender. The way that I found this one out is that I once shamefully tore open a gift at dinner before my host schooled me in proper etiquette. Another lesson learned. Now let's explore some customs outside of the home. Blowing your nose or applying makeup? Not the best idea to do in public. Discreetly slip away to handle your private business in private. And you're gonna notice pretty quickly that Japan's streets are immaculately clean from litter and gum. You'll be hard pressed to find a trash can anywhere. Be prepared to adopt the habit of carrying waste with you until you return home. I mean, not home home on your flight, but back to your hotel room. Those plastic bags you packed will definitely come in handy. Now, there are some customs that might seem quirky, but it's important to respect them in Japan. In Japan, the number four is avoided because in Japanese, the word four sounds like death. The number four is extremely unlucky. I have four facts around the number four. Number one, you must always avoid giving anyone something in fours because it can be seen as a very ominous gift. Number two, elevator labels will often be missing a fourth floor. Number three, in extreme cases, buildings will not have floors 40 to 49. Number 49 is especially unlucky, as it sounds similar to the phrase that means painful until death. And number four, the practice of avoiding number four is called tetraphobia, and it's common in many East Asian and Southeast Asian regions. Okay, I'm adding a fifth one out of respect, and possibly out of my own superstitions as well. Number five, it seems that very few Japanese people really care about this superstition nowadays. But just be aware, since it's still pretty widely observed in China and Korea, where the number four also sounds like death. I'm gonna keep going, 
But skip ahead if you're all etiqueted out. This is for the real culture lovers. There's a ban on mid-walk snacking or drinking. It's seen as sloppy, but it is okay to eat an ice cream cone on the street. Strange. And don't skip the line in Japan. If police see you doing it and it's accompanied by rough behavior like pushing, they can prosecute it as an act of violence or intimidation. It's not punishable by fines or imprisonment, but it's highly frowned upon by the locals. These puzzling practices have profound cultural wisdom behind them. Together, they create va, a Japanese cultural concept usually translated as societal harmony, order, and group consciousness. Disrupting va is disrespectful. One of the Japanese secrets to a harmonious life is amotenashi, warm hospitality and care for others. Keep an open mind and heart as you unravel the mysteries of Japan. What intrigues you most so far about Japanese customs? Let me know in the comments. I'm eager to hear your reactions and discuss this remarkable culture. As we wrap up cultural insights, I want to hear from parents and pet owners specifically. How does traveling to Japan with your kids or pets impact your approach? Share any concerns below about bringing your whole family or your furry friends along, and I'll make sure to cover planning tips tailored for your next trip. When you start dreaming of your Japan adventures, some of you might be wondering, is it feasible to bring the kids along or my pets along? And will they even enjoy themselves? Well, never fear. I'm here to assure you that Japan has plenty of family-friendly experiences and furry-friendly travel options. With a little bit of planning, you can craft a one-of-a-kind trip that they won't forget. Japan is truly the home of so many things kids adore. Fast trains and futuristic robots, fierce ninjas and noble samurai, quirky anime cartoons and colorful manga comics, and we can't forget Super Mario games and Hello Kitty cuteness. And beyond the flashy stuff, Japan offers intellectual curiosities to stimulate growing minds like few other destinations can. When it comes to dining, there are plenty of budget-friendly options. At any standard sushi joint, meals cost a mere 800 to 1500 yen per person, including drinks. And restaurants traditionally serve chilled tea or water free of charge. For something extra fun, Visit themed eateries devoted to cute characters like Hello Kitty. The Kawaii Monster Cafe is also a huge favorite. When you're on a budget, hot ramen bowls and bento box meals from vending machines or convenience stores can fill your little bellies for 500 to 800 yen. And now for the best part, activities. My top recommended kid pleasers include robot shows, digital art museums, rainbow candy making, kimono wearing, feeding the deer in Nara, and screaming through the Fuji Q Highland roller coasters. I'll link to a quick kids list that I've created for planning out your trip for the little ones because I'm just scratching the surface here. Speaking of scratching, we can't forget our little furry friends. Here are some tips for smooth travels. Start prepping about four to five months ahead. That's not a suggestion, it's a requirement. Vet visits are key to getting your pet in tip-top shape. Address any health issues, get vaccinations up to date, and confirm that they meet the weight and size limits. Rules are really strict in Japan when it comes to pets. So get checkups, vaccinations, paperwork like rabies certifications and import approval forms all sorted out well in advance. And if you're planning on moving to Japan with your pet long-term, consider professional pet relocators. The process is very extensive and you don't wanna go about it alone. Be sure to research pet-friendly lodging extensively ahead of time. Major cities like Tokyo and Osaka have hotels that accommodate pets some with private outdoor spaces, but many traditional inns still prohibit animals. So also look into vacation rentals as an alternative. Scope out pet-friendly attractions and outdoor spaces in advance too. While pets are banned from most museums and restaurants, some parts like Meiji Jingu in Tokyo or Nara Park allow leashed pets. Unfortunately, options are limited, so you'll have to maximize your time at pet-approved spots. And remember that trash cans are sparse throughout the city. While picking up your pet's waste, you might have to travel quite a while before finding a receptacle to throw it in. Now I'll say it again, traveling with a pet in Japan is much more of a process than you would think. So don't use this as your final stop for prep. I haven't even touched on their microchipping and rabies policies. Please do your research on what you'll need for approval and you cannot wait until the last minute on this one. Overall, the key to family travel in Japan is balancing must-see attractions with plenty of free time to wander the hidden back streets as you discover this enchanting country together. Slow down and savor each moment as a family. Okay, parents, let me know in the comments. Does a Japan vacation with your kids or pets sound exciting or overwhelming? Share your biggest hopes and concerns for family travel in Japan. 
I'll make sure to cover planning insights that speak to your needs. All right, let's shift gears to a super important topic, making sure your tech is prepped. But first, if you're finding this Japan guide helpful, please take just a second to hit that like button. It really supports me in creating more useful resources to encourage international travel. And be sure to check out my website for free downloadable travel planning kits and itineraries. Okay, back to the tech tips. While Tokyo is home to the world's largest public Wi-Fi network, with a network of over 100,000 Wi-Fi hotspots throughout the city, it's still important that you make arrangements for your own connectivity, for privacy and cell phone use while you travel through Japan. Japan. Option one is renting a pocket Wi-Fi device. These portable routers can be picked up at the airport when you land. Power it on and instantly you've got a Wi-Fi hotspot to connect all of your devices. Your phone, your tablet, your laptop, everything. Pocket Wi-Fi rental plans typically offer unlimited data at speeds good enough for web browsing, posts, basic streaming, and watching my YouTube videos. And you can share the connection with your whole family or group. When your trip ends, you just pop the router into a prepaid return envelope and drop it into any mailbox. Or you can just return it at the airport on your way out. It's so easy. If traveling solo, or if you prefer to not have to carry around a pocket Wi-Fi, a local SIM card for your unlocked phone is another choice. At electronic shops, you can buy a SIM, pop it in your phone, and have data everywhere instantly. The convenient thing is that SIMs let you pay for only the data amount that you need. Navigating Tokyo's maze-like railway networks and subway system can seem really daunting, but apps like Google Maps and Hyperdia and Tokyo Subway Nav simplify everything with comprehensive route planning schedules and station layouts. Oh, and don't forget portable chargers and power adapters that are suited for Japan's unique outlets. My preferred charger is Anchor. They make a great lightweight pocket charger that has high capacity. And a travel surge protector can prevent your gadgets from getting fried during power spikes. And here are some important privacy tips. While you're out exploring, only connect to password protected, reputable Wi-Fi networks. Save your banking and sensitive logins for complete security back at your hotel. And use a VPN service like NordVPN for encrypted protection on public Wi-Fi. Enable two-factor authentication whenever possible. Let me know in the comments if you need any other advice on smooth tech and internet capabilities in Japan. I have plenty of other travel accessories and apps that I can absolutely recommend to make your travel even smoother. Now at this point, you're probably realizing that while you have a great foundation, there's still so much more that you need to know to transform these preparation tips into an actual vacation itinerary. Although you now understand the essentials for getting trip ready, you won't be able to bring this knowledge to life until you know how to put together the perfect travel route, build activities into your days, and match the sites with your interests. That's why in my next video, I've designed the ideal Tokyo travel itinerary that's tailored exactly to new visitors. It's packed with information on all the best places to visit in a magically cinematic way. And also check out this next video where we'll dive even further into the wonders of traveling throughout Japan. I can't wait to help you map out the journey of a lifetime in Japan. Until next time, sayonara from Tokyo.